And welcome back to the Outdoors and Art Radio Show on WRVO Radio. I'm the show's host, Blake Gamma, and I'm out here in the outdoors. We want you to get the full effect of the outdoors. We are the real outdoor radio show. We want you to hear the birds. We want you to hear the animals walk through the leaves. We want you to get that full effect of the outdoors, making it the real outdoor radio show. Again, I'm out here without Adam. Man, he is ditching me. I'm just kidding. No, he is a business, and he's been extraordinarily busy with it, and he's doing great work there. But anyway, he is not here today. But instead of Adam, we do have a new guest with us today. Her name's Stacy Bravo. She is a writer at SurvivalLife.com and is the founder of Anything Survival. So, Stacy, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, I started Anything Survival about two years ago. Um, I was working at I just wanted to, you know, share my knowledge at this bottle and then um, I started working for Survival Life in November. And uh, I have written 75 articles for them. Um, anything from weather safety to gardening to pest control to bird out bags, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I have a motto. Uh, and I, I'm a strong believer in having the knowledge and skill before you actually need it. So that's why I want to share my knowledge and, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but uh, I enjoy what I do and uh, our plans for anything survival starting in the fall, I would like to start an online store. Um, we don't have any definite details at the moment, but uh, that's something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome, Stacy. Now, if you can, uh, what's what's the link of your website? The website is anythingsurvival.us. Um, right now, it's in the early stages still. Uh, I will be working on it and adding the online store info soon. Um, but we can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Now, what's your Twitter? Uh, the Twitter is twitter.com slash anything survival and uh it's the letter n the letter e thing survival that's awesome you guys be sure to check that out up on twitter uh she has some really awesome work going up on there now um i do have a quick question for you i got a bunch of questions for you actually but um i'll okay. i want to ask you what is your top five favorite household fire starting materials okay um the first one, um, most people don't carry these in their houses, but I do. Um, my number one fire starting material is a fur rod. Um, I think they're uh, very important as matches and lighters uh, can get wet or mm -hmm. the lighter or the fluid in the lighter can dry up. So I think uh, fur rod is important to have in your home, your bug out bag, your camping equipment, your car. I mean. Mm -hmm. I think anyone should have more than three or four. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, number two would be obviously the lighter. Um, number three would be cotton balls for tinder. Um, and coated and Vaseline uh, makes them um, very flammable. So if you, you know, could prepare those in advance. Mm -hmm. um, most people keep them in the... Uh, um, the camera film containers. I don't know if anybody remembers those, but if you have some, save them. They make great containers for those. Hmm. Um, number four would be the 9-volt battery and the steel wool method. Um, if you touch the steel wool with the battery, it will immediately flame up. Um, my, only, my only advice is don't hold the steel wool in your hand. Uh, place it on a fire resistant uh, surface like concrete, um, but it's very effective. Um, if you pack them for camping, pack them separately. So, so um, if I, so what I do with a nine volt battery, I take the uh, the filler, uh, the steel wool, put it on the ground, and then I strike it with a nine volt battery. And then all I do is touch it. Does that zap me or anything? Um. The only thing I've ever tried is the 9-volt battery in the steel wall. I mean, um, uh, it, for, it works very well, so um, that method should work as well, too. So, um, so it won't, it won't but, zap me at all? I'm sorry? 
So if I touch the flint and uh, excuse me, the steel wool, I touch that right after I strike the the nine volt battery against it. Will that will that shock me? No. Okay, no. so it's. But yeah. if you're holding the wool, it will burn your hands most likely. <laughs> so <laughs> probably. I, okay, that's that's <laughs> me. Okay, that's I've heard of that before, but I've never actually personally tried that. Honestly, because I just don't carry steel wool and the nine volt battery in my pocket. So uh, anyway, uh, that's All right. yeah. So uh, there's. In your household, there's plenty of fire starting materials in your household, uh, such as dryer lint, cotton ball, like you said, I love cotton balls, they're my favorite way to start fire with flint and steel, uh, even fabric softener, all of that is very flammable, all you need is flint and steel for that, but uh, using steel wool is another good method. So anyway, I got another question for you. I always ask this to any guest that we've had on our show, and I've asked Dave Canterbury, I've asked James Hart, I've asked Auden Morse, I've always asked people this, and so I want, ev I want the listeners to get everybody's opinion, but what is the most important skill in survival? Well, for me, besides the three, the fire, uh, fire, shelter, and water, um, the most important skill for me is mental focus, um, because... Survival is 90% mental, mm -hmm. and if you have skill sets in fire making, shelter, and water purification, that's great, but if you don't have the mental focus and you, you begin to panic or, or anything like that, then it kind of... It kind of messes with the process a little bit, and if you, if you think about it, if you stay focused, in any survival situation, then the rest will just come easy mm -hmm. or be, easier. I would agree with that. Um, like mo most, uh, most of the people who have come on our show, they'll say uh, fire building's number one, uh, water collecting's number one, uh, they'll say all of that. Actually, James Hart, uh, he said the, that it is mental focus, and I would actually agree with that. Uh, in my opinion, it is based upon your knowledge and survival, not necessarily the, uh, the gear you have. Uh, if you know how to use a knife in 50 different ways, then just striking wood or striking flint and steel, whatever you do with it, uh, that's going to be good for you. Now, if you know how to use a, a, a knife to uh, baton wood, that's going to be really helpful for you. Uh, that might eliminate some weight on your pack. It might you, have, you can get rid of your axe. You can get rid of your saw. If you know how to use a knife and baton it, now let's save yourself some room. It's really not that hard. I do it often. Uh, it's really fun. But anyway, uh, moving on, I got another question for you. What is some survival gear you carry in your bug out bag? Well, I'm in the process of putting one together, and like I stated in one of my recent articles, um, the contents change all the time due to, due to better ideas or different equipment. But um, I like to have more than one uh, purpose for something to that pack, um, like a milky tool. You know, oh. kind of goes for such a thing. You could do all kinds of things with a multi tool. Uh, paracord, you can use paracord for shelters and snares and fishing. Um, a tarp uh, can be used for shelter. Uh, a makeshift hammock. Uh, a signaling device. Um, also, another item is a whistle. Uh, you can signal for help, and you can ward off predators um, as a last resort. Uh, I've never thought of that before. Uh, worn off pet predators. I've never actually thought of that. I like that. I just <laughs> I never thought that far. And duct tape. Um, I added duct tape because, well, you know the saying, if it can't be fixed or repaired with duct tape, then, you know, let it go. <laughs> but also you can make, uh, you can make quarters with it. You can repair things with it, like your tarp. You can um, use it as to secure a bandage for first aid. And there's so many things you can do with duct tape. So, duct tape there's is, many things that I'm packing my back, but those are my top uh -huh. five. I love, right I love duct tape. <laughs> duct tape is an awesome product to have with you. Uh, like you said, you make cordage out of it. Uh, one of my favorites is actually start a fire with it. It's actually It burns for a really long time, making a great right. survival uh, tender right there. Um, there's so many things to do with duct tape. But you know what I once said? I was younger. Actually, I used to be very obsessed with uh, duct tape. I started my own company when I was like, I think it was 12, maybe 11. I started my own company, guys, and it was called Cincinnati's Duct Tape Factory. I literally made duct tape products. I made wallets, I made purses, I made belts, I made whatever with duct tape. But I used to say this all the time, and, what I, and I still use it a lot. I say, the key 
The earthly key to just about anything is duct tape. Duct tape is literally the answer to everything. If you have something broke, you can fix it with duct tape. Uh, we had a broomstick. It broke, and then uh, we had this Swiffer mop, and that was broken too. And so I took the bottom of the Swiffer mop, I tied it to the, I duct taped it to the broomstick, and there I go. I had a fixed, um, I had a fixed, um, I had a fixed, excuse me, a fixed uh, Swiffer mop, and that was really awesome, and uh, that that was neat, and that's a good. Good idea. It's good to have duct tape with you. And uh, I talked about this with Dave Canterbury. I said with um, with with Dave Canterbury, Adam, and Kim Burkhard, we we're talking. I was like, uh, in World War Z. I don't know if you ever seen that uh, film. Um, it's a interesting film. Uh, it's like a zombie apocalypse type of thing. Uh, I'm not really into zombies, but they're interesting. And in that, um, you can you watch Brad Pitt, the actor, do stuff, and he literally takes duct tape. He takes a broomstick and a knife. He duct taped the knife to the broomstick, and there he, there you go. You had a spear. And so I thought that was pretty neat. But moving on off of duct tape, even though I could talk about that all day. Tell us some safety skills. Tell us some safety skills uh, that you can learn during a natural disaster. And what do I do in a thunderstorm? What do I do in a tornado? What can I do to survive that? Well, um, I live in Texas, and of course, everybody knows that's Tornado Valley. Um, and by the way, uh, pardon my dog barking in the background. No worries. Uh, the two important things to learn is the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. Um, let's see. A watch means, sorry, uh, that there's a possibility of one in or near the area. A warning has as a tornado that has been sighted or indicated by weather radar. Um, mm -hmm. In which case, you would find shelter. Um, Underground or a basement or a storm cellar would be ideal. But if you don't have those, then an enter room, like a hallway or a bathroom, any room without a window. Um, a lot of people, you know, take shelter in a bathtub and they put something heavy, like a mattress, on top of them. Um, I've been fortunate to never have to do that, but I know of a lot of people that have and it saved their life. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, they really, you know, we're in storm season right now, obviously, and it's really important to, um, to know ahead of time to, uh, like, for instance, um, have a weather radio, uh, because electricity can go out, uh, so having that extra, you know, plug in into the outside world to listen to the weather and updates and stuff is really good to have. Mm -hmm. um, extra batteries and flashlights. Um, and your cell phones. Have, if you know a storm is coming, then have your cell phone charged. And that way if something does happen, you can, you know, Mm -hmm. Call out for help. Yeah, there's some good advice there, and uh, you can go on her web on uh, survivallife.com. You can see some of her work. She writes articles about some of the subjects we're talking about. But anyway, uh, we have a commercial break. We'll be back after these messages. Are you tired of mediocre box store deer lures? Well, let me introduce you to Mastin's Deer Sense. We offer unique and trustworthy deer scents for any hunter. Try our no mess gel crystals for quick and easy setups or use our four ounce spray bottles as you walk to your stand laying down a steady scent trail. If you really need your scent to reach out there, then heat up your hunting experience with our double scent stack. Check out all our quality products at mastinsdeersense.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Outdoors and Zart Radio Show. I'm out here with Stacy Bravo out here in the outdoors. Now Stacy, I have another question for you. So, give us some information on addressing poisonous animal bites, like from spiders and snakes. Okay, um, well, spiders, I wrote an article called Spiders of the United States on survivallife.com, and I listed the most common spiders of the United States. Um, the two main spiders that you need to really worry about is the brown recluse, which is a hand colored spider, not very big, um, and has a violin shaped on its body. And the other spider, of course, is the black widow, um, which can be fatal, the bite of the black widow. Well, yeah, she, she's, she's pretty powerful, don't you think? I mean, she, like, took out all these super villains, and uh, she doesn't even have any superpowers. All she has is two pistols. 
Uh, but, yeah, Scarlett Johansson, man. I don't know how. I don't know how she did that, but I mean, that, that's a seriously powerful Black Widow you got there. I know what you're talking about. The actual spider just messing with you. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, talk about the Black Widow. <laughs> okay. Well, I have listed in that article um, of the most common spiders. Some are really venomous, and some aren't. Um, if you're, my advice on the spider bite, if you're not sure what spider has bit you, um, seek medical help immediately. Um, emergency room or call nine one one. Thrombocytes aren't usually fatal, but they do cause erosion of the skin. And if it's left untreated, can lead to infection, which that can be fatal in itself. So, uh, but in the article, I, I, I advise everyone to read it. I list uh, my uh, input pictures of what deep spire looks like. Um, so, I mean, just if you're bitten and you know it's not venomous, uh, first aid at home, you can clean it with mild soap and use an. Uh, uh, near spawn um, and a bandage. Um, keep an eye on it and in case you're wrong, if it does swell or it has a hard lump under the skin, I would seek medical attention immediately. So. Okay. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it on the spire bites. But I mean, just it's really good to have, you know, knowledge ahead of time because in Texas, there's all kinds of spiders out here, and we have the wolf spider, and even though it's not fatal, the wolf spider can cause, kind of like the brown clues, but not as bad, erosion of the skin and whatnot, so it's really important to yeah. know exactly mm -hmm. Yeah, here yeah, we have. You. Yeah, here we have uh, wolf spiders. It's actually uh, watering my garden. I got some onions growing in a bucket. I actually read an article about that, and that's actually where I got that idea from. So I thank you for writing that article, and that's why I'm growing them in buckets, just to test and see how it goes. But anyway, I'm watering. I actually reached out there just to see how big the bulb was getting. I looked down there. I kid you not. I see a wolf spider, a good two inches in diameter. I'm like. Whoa, that thing is big. <laughs> I was like, okay. They did, okay, they did. okay. I'm back. <laughs> and they also carry their young on their back. So, um, a wolf spider will carry, uh, if I had to guess, about 40 to 50 young, depending on the size, on their back. Oh, wow. So, if you see this weird looking brown spider and it's full of lumpy on the outside, it's because they're carrying their young on their back. So, okay. Yeah, he had a fat rear. Uh, he had a fat rear. He didn't see nothing uh, special. I uh, didn't see any young ones or any bumps on his back. I just realized that he, I mean, he was unusually large, and I was pretty frightened to touch it. So what I did, I didn't put him in my bucket, of course, and I was like, well, I can grab a stick and smash him, but I would probably destroy the soil and get mess up my plant. And so I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually go get a fat in the cardboard box, which was just sitting right there. I picked it up. I'm like, well. Well, if I get bit by this thing, well, that's part of the Lord's will. And so I reach down and pull it in there, and I get them in there. And then uh, I shake the box like 50 times, and I kill it. And I actually ended up keeping it, because I, I knew I could scare the family with it. So what I did, I put it in some rubbing alcohol, because rubbing alcohol actually preserves the animal. I mean, I could leave it in there for five, six years without even decaying, losing one hair or nothing. It won't decay, because there's no bacteria in that rubbing alcohol. And so I just put it in this jar, and so when all the kids came home, I pulled it out, and they all started screaming and so I thought that was funny but um, yeah you, you gotta be aware of your spiders because uh, when you when you're in the outdoors whether you're just hunting uh, fishing whatever you're doing you get spider bite man you're in a survival situation now you gotta figure out how to address that whether it's poisonous black widow or just a wolf spider even though it can cause harm it's not fatal or nothing uh, you just gotta be aware of that kind of stuff you guys gotta know that but anyway speaking of animals and insects and animals like that um, even though they ain't poisonous or nothing, um, tell us about uh, have, tell us about what you would do while addressing a, a, a bear attack. Any type of bear. Uh, let's go over two bears: a grizzly bear and a black bear. Okay. Well, um, first of all, if you know you're going to be in bear country, you want to prepare. Uh, uh, the bullhorn things, not the bullhorn, but the uh, air horn. Sorry. Um, Mm -hmm. It is typically used by some to scare the bear off. Um, some use bear spray, which is basically, um, <laughs> it's not poisonous to the bear, but it's a deterrent to, you know, of course, if you get close enough to the bear to spray it, 
then to me, you're in this wrong situation that this, you know, this spray may not, you know, be as helpful. But if you know you're going to be in bear country, there's things to look for, like bear scat. And for those who don't know what scat is, it's bear poop. Um, bear dens, which is pretty much a large area of matted down leaves and, you know, debris. Um, a lot of bears, but don't ever try to outrun a bear. Um, bears can run, uh, black bears are actually the fastest. They can run up to 30 miles an hour. A very fit human being. So we're talking about black can widows run now. Like only 28 black, miles per hour. Now we're talking about black, so, black widows and now black bears. Are we going on to like this black spree now? And uh, what, what we're going to talk about? What we're going to talk about next? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, what, what I've heard from black bears is that when you see a black bear, um, it's actually reasonably rare to get attacked by one. Um, Oh. If they do uh, come at you, what you do, you don't run, you don't climb up a tree like you see in the movies and whatever. What you do is actually make yourself look bigger and badder than what you are. Uh, you stand on the yeah, rock. Gonna, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you get confronted as like a black bear, they don't want to fight you any more than you want to fight them. So just be safe to be still, stay on your ground, kind of show up your chest a little bit, act bigger than you really are. And that most times will intimidate the bear into staying in their own spot, you stay in your own spot, and you gradually, if you can, slowly back away. And once you have enough distance, you can just leave. Um, and all that time, the bear is left also. They're most, uh, any bear, grizzly, black bear, um, they're real territorial um, and protective over their food and their young. No cuts. So, um, it, mm -hmm. my advice is if you're in bear country, to stay alert, know what's around you. Don't, like you said, don't climb trees because black bears can climb trees very fast. So, I mean, um, I would use an air horn as a deterrent. I'm not a big fan of the bear spray. Um, but I kind of like the episode of Alone, where the early episodes were, so one had it. Uh, an air horn, and it worked. Um, they say if you're walking around and there's really no bear sightings, but you know they're around there somewhere, you can, you know, talk loudly, say, hey, bear, hey, bear, and usually that'll keep them where they're at if they're hidden somewhere, and they hear you, they'll go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So... Now, um, I was I read this. I thought it's funny. I'm sure you've heard of the song, uh, "What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger." And uh, I saw this on Facebook, and he was like, "What doesn't uh, What doesn't kill kill you makes you stronger, except for grizzly bears. They will kill you." I just uh, chuckled hysterically. Yeah, they that. will. <laughs> I'm like, they're very aggressive bears. So, but the most common uh, bear attacks are actually black bears. But yeah, uh, treat any type of bear, grizzly bear, black bear, polar bear, stroke north. You know, it just, but yeah, Grizzlies, yeah, well. Grizzlies, uh, it's pretty, if you watch, have you seen The Revenant? Yes, I have. That was a pretty good movie. Oh my goodness. Uh, even though that That's bears, a good movie. the bear scene was very dramatic, and honestly, you couldn't have survived that dramatic of a bear scene, even though it's based upon a true story. There's no possible way you could have survived that, but, I mean, that, that, that happens. Grizzly bears are the most, probably one of the most vicious bears, and if you see a grizzly bear, a good, let's say, 20 feet away from you, you better hope he don't see you, because if he sees you, that's about it. There's not much you can do, unless you have a horn or a spray, whatever you got, that might save you, but you cannot fight it off. Uh, he had a gun. Uh, what, uh, I, don't, I can't remember the character's name off the top of my head, uh, the main character from The Revenant. He had a gun. The Baron like, knocked him out of his head. Even though he shot him, it didn't kill him. It takes, it takes a very powerful gun to kill a bear in one shot. And so, uh, if you don't don't be all safe. You're like, oh, I got a gun. I'm going to be okay. Uh, the chances are you may not be okay with just a gun. So getting uh, spray or horn, that might end up saving your life in that type of situation. So anyway, Stacy, why don't you tell us your website link again so they can uh, go look that up? Sure. It's anythingsurvival.us. Um, you can find us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash anythingsurvival, and twitter.com anythingsurvival, and that's 
yeah, guys, you be sure to check that out. Also, you can check out her work on Survival Life. She posts a lot of articles each week, maybe about, what, three to four articles a week uh, on there. You can you can click one of her articles. You'll see her name up there. You click that. There's a link on her name. And you read her bio. You can see all the articles she's written. She's written, what, 60-plus articles for Survival Life. Uh, there's a lot of good information she gives out there. So please check that out at survivallife.com. Great information there. So anyway, Stacy, I thank you for coming on the show. And you have a good one, Thanks all right? Thanks for having me. All right, bye-bye. Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Well, that was awesome having Stacy on the show. I'm glad she came on board. And so, anyway, guys, please stay tuned next week for our next show. Uh, please listen to that. And then also feel free to check out our uh, social media, uh, our Facebook, uh, for our website, and for our radio show, The Outdoors and Art is our radio show. And then the website is The Art of the Outdoors. And please like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter so that you can get the latest outdoor news. Anyway, I'm Blake Gamma, the host of the Outdoors Inside Radio Show, and I'm glad to have you on the show. You guys tune in next week.